Good morning, folks. We're going to watch some solar tornado plasma filaments rotate into a perfect side view from Earth. We've got some news across the board, so let's get right to it at spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star with a continuing lack of sunspots, but also the presence of the coronal holes. The next one coming in at lower latitude is visible now at the left side just south of the equator, still have them confined to the poles as well. Meanwhile, the recently departed coronal hole has its solar wind on the way to Earth. Today, we see the telemetry continuing to calm up top in blue. It's a phi angle driving for a shift, which means the faster stream from the departed coronal hole should be arriving today. Geomagnetic conditions are all quiet while we wait. Let's go to eastern India and Bangladesh, where the cyclone ran ashore, has killed at least four. Hundreds of thousands evacuated and the rescue operations are underway. Thousands of downed trees and damage to infrastructure, many will be rebuilding entirely. NASA released some satellite shots of the storm, but more interesting was their global tropical storm track map, really patterned appearance of these systems. We also want to take a quick jump over to Oman, where a thunderstorm rolled through, tossed powerful lightning strikes which injured people caught out in the storm. Now let's go to the science. Our first story might seem like old news to space weather veterans, but we've seen nation by nation refuse to consider geoelectric hazard conditions before studies like this one are done. Indeed, the events that rapidly produce geomagnetic storm activity are the source of the major magnetic disruptions at ground level and the threats to the nation's power here. In terms of those geomagnetic events, scientists are diving deeper into the processes affecting the ionosphere and plasmasphere. It's the ceiling of the global electric circuit and source of the short-term effects of space weather on pressure cells and wind speed. By weak, they mean really weak, just a nudge on the edge of an icy slope. And speaking of ice, let's go to the global warming treasure trove, the Arctic responsible for over half of the climate change on the books, and those books have some serious problems. Following the Harvard team thrashing the sea surface temperature record last month, here comes an A-plus team from Sweden and China questioning the level of warming in the Arctic and identifying an amplification problem in the modeling that really overestimates the future changes in the northern polar region. Don't expect those guys at Al Gore's birthday party. For more on the solar effect on the lower atmosphere and the weather, and with the problems with the data and models, see the link below to our climate forcing videos. They are highly recommended. Now we're going to make a stop at the moon on our way out to space and we're talking helium-3, well known to be one of the best potential fuel sources in the lunar crustal material. We now have a better idea of where that fuel will be found, and we not only have a macro scale evaluation of the whole planet, but also several close-up analyses, looking at specific regions and the helium sources at finer detail, the regions that appear darker to our eyes and the gray frames are where the helium is most dense. We've got a double dose of Shoal Star binary intrusion into the solar system up next. First, we are finding out that the primary in the binary that intruded through our system 72,000 years ago is in fact bigger than believed by about 10%. They are still pegging its close approach to where they identify the outer Kuiper belt and Oort cloud to be about 68,000 AU away, but there is reason to think it could be far, far closer, and that may have left something behind. But Oh, whatever could it be? Anyway, moving on to the next paper, because we have continued evidence that Jupiter did not form where it is now. It came from much further away and intruded at a later time. Somehow. Every piling up bit of evidence in this regard reminds me that our people once worshipped Saturn. Then, in a great event, Jupiter took over. Interesting coincidence that they could have been so right without seeing it, allegedly. Okay, back to today and some sobering physics. Looking at the cores of stellar material coming together, but definitively before the stellar ignition. They have used polarization and other spectral abundance mapping to plot the magnetic fields in these regions, and this is a necessary next step in the great molecular cloud discovery from the SOFIA team last year that magnetic fields and plasma turbulence dominate star formation in these cosmic nurseries. Now, last but not least, and a nice easy cherry on top of that complex magnetic field Sunday I just forced upon you, here's the setup. Magnetized plasma, like you would find in those molecular cloud stellar nurseries, or in the pre-galactic plasma of the early universe permeated by primordial fields. When you pulse electrons through it, 
a metered current, this is what you get. This is what we see. It's a plasma universe. With those climate videos below is the plasma cosmology film, films actually as well. Please check them out as they will get you caught up on nine years of research, much more actually, in less than one day. And today will be the last day for free U.S. shipping on the children's books. These are perfect gifts for the little one. My wife is extremely talented and it shows otf.cells.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here but right now it's 4 20 a.m in the new valley of the sun eyes open no fear be safe everyone